picturesque North Gate, we enter Yellowstone National Park, one of America's most beautiful and phenomenal wilderness areas. I spend too many hours cooped up in an office. I'd like to get away from the people pressure. When you're out here and you can sort of reevaluate your problems and say, well, it's more important for me to have a drink of water out of that cold spring right now than just about anything in the world. I think the greatest hope for a happy life for any young person nowadays is in the existence of national parks and wildlife refuges and wilderness areas. Otherwise, I think my great-grandchildren might have a very barren and sterile kind of existence. I can't imagine a very rich life with elemental kind of joys in it without some natural world in which to experience those joys. And I've watched my very young grandchildren enough to know that it does impinge on a youthful mind very powerfully and that it does mean a great deal to them. wilderness itself. It has been the basis of all our civilization so far. And having been the basis of all our sophisticated society, doesn't wilderness itself have a right to live on? And I wonder if we have enough reverence to life to concede to wilderness this right. And if this is to be accomplished, surely the national parks are the first place we would look to see this happening. All things are connected. Whatever befalls the earth, befalls the sons of the earth. Even the white man cannot be exempt from the common destiny. We may be brothers after all. We shall see. This we know. The earth does not belong to man. Man belongs to the earth.